uh, view on Africa. Uh, I'm Richard Chellen, researcher in the ENAC program at the Institute for Security Studies. And this week we're going to be talking about um, the role of corruption in wildlife crime. Well, corruption is, plays a, a major important role in wildlife crime, as um, it's noted in the 2016 uh, UNODC Wildlife Crime Report, where it says corruption is a primary enabler of wildlife crimes. And um, it's only in the 17th meeting of uh, the Convention of the International Trade in Endangered Species Conference that corruption actually became a primary uh, focus on the agenda where um, a resolution was passed um, at the conference, which would mark the first time that this happened. Um, and in his speech, uh, the executive director of UNODC also mentioned the importance and the pivotal role that corruption plays in enabling wildlife crime at every uh, chain of the illegal trade. Yes, it's, it's uh, an example of corruption in the South African context will be the Abalone trade and most recently in the past year where nine officials from the Department of Agriculture and Fisheries who've been uh, arrested for aiding poachers uh, in early 2018. And also we've seen um, also events where Abalone storing facilities have been broken into by criminals and only to later on involve officials in 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 the crime. Well, when we look at the Abalone trade, it's, it's quite wisely to look at it as a, as a triangular problem where we have the issue of uh, poor policy, uh, criminality, and corruption. And in order to uh, address that issue, it, it's good to have a concerted effort uh, at each level, targeted at each level. For instance, in terms of criminality, um, there's been uh, talks about increasing policing on the waters. While this is um, makes sense in the sense that like increased policing will no doubt reduce poaching activities, however, it's not a long-term solution because um, it will tend to move those criminals into other areas. For instance, um, Abalone poachers who are no longer able to provide uh, a livelihood to their families based on poaching will move in other form of crime and uh, that can cause a serious problem. And uh, one way to address that would be definitely to um, create a socio-economic transformation of the coastline and the people that are involved in the Abalone trade for a living. Therefore creating opportunities and, and for their livelihood as such. In terms of policy, it will be important to look at the current policy that's in place where it's where the fault rise is in the tender processes. Um, if we look at the current policy in the abalone trade, you'll see that um, seized abalone can be resold uh, into the legal market. However, there are no check and balances on how that process unfolds. So one way would be to really implement, I mean, look at uh, checks and balances within the process and in that way that will also target corruption where um, we examine the, the process and how it operates in terms of from the beginning, from the auction phases to how tenders are distributed, who gets the tenders and open a more uh, transparent system with regard to that. That will aim to target uh, a better policy with regard to selling seized abalone. And the last one would be um, targeting the uh, corruption. And that will also take efforts on the side of there will be greater, there need to be a greater capacity building for law enforcement officials and uh, prosecutors and, and lawyers who, um, in dealing with, with the cases. And one way to enable to build this capacity would be to maybe relook at reopening the environmental courts that were played quite a major role um, a decade ago in, in uh, reducing the abalone trade. Another aspect to deal with that corruption will be more intergovernmental cooperation where different 
departments come together, work to get together with corruption uh, and law enforcement officials that deal with corruption, have a greater uh, uh, coordination and sharing of information. But overall, we need a more holistic approach where everyone, uh, all the stakeholders, key stakeholders, come in and both public and private, where we address the issue as a concerted effort rather than individuals trying to uh, address the problem on their own.